right? Then the inverse of this should be written cotangent inverse of x. What about domain restrictions here? Hmm. What was the domain restriction for cotangent? Or sorry, for what was the domain restriction for tangent? For tangent, right? Because cotangent's tangent just flipped over, right? Isn't it? So are we going to keep? Are we going to? Are we going to keep the same domain restriction we had for tangent or not? What do you all think? You think so? Do you think we'll keep the same restriction or? You think still, is, it, is it between the same two? You have to be careful, because remember with tangent, t tangent is between negative pi over two and pi over two when you graph it, right? But cotangent is moved over, right? It looks, it's flipped, but it's moved over. So our domain restriction here is going to be, I want to, I want to actually do it. Let's graph the cotangent here. I'm going to graph cotangent x here. It was pi, right, here. And then here at 0, we had a vertical. Here's pi over 2. And the graph went like this. Right? That was our graph. So if, if we look at it just between 0 and pi, look at that piece between 0 and pi. Is that a 1 to 1 function? Remember I talked about one-to-one -one last time? Is this a one-to-one -one function between here and here? Yes. Passes both the vertical and horizontal line tests here. So I don't need to do anything weird with the domain. I just stick with this one, this restriction right here, and everything should be fine. So I just want to make sure my x is between 0 and pi. And now everything behaves the way that you would, you would think it behaves. I, well, I hope it's going to behave the way you think it behaves. Let's see. What would cotangent inverse of 1 be? So what is that really saying? This is saying where is cotangent of some angle equal to 1, right? That's the big thing we have to understand from this notation. This is really saying find the angle that when you take cotangent of it, you get that answer. But that's the same as asking, what's this flipped over? Tangent. tangent. So this is also asking when is tangent of some angle equal to that flipped over, 1 over 1 is 1, and where is tangent 1? Pi over 4. So you have to remember this, okay? You have, to, you have to be comfortable enough with this equation now to be like, okay, I know that I'm talking about pi over 4. We're going to do one more and we're moving on. I think you all are kind of getting this. Let me give you one where we, can, we have to use our calculator. So what's cotangent inverse of 4.85? We don't have a cotangent inverse button, do we? What button do we have? Tangent inverse. So this is really on my calculator saying, where is tangent inverse? Tangent inverse of what? One over that, right? So you're going to need to get on your calculator and figure out what 1 divided by 4.85 is. Do one, you know, the reciprocal of that, and then take the tangent inverse, and that should get you your answer. Sorry, say again? Because that one, uh, that first one on the left, it's not a tangent inverse. I could have said this is the same as saying what's tangent inverse of 1. Oh, okay. Right? Saying what's cotangent inverse of 1 is the same as saying what's tangent inverse of the 1 flipped over. 
And on your calculator, that would give you 45 degrees or pi over 4. Is that what you're asking me? I'll ask you after class. You sure? Yeah. OK. So what do we get here? In, in degrees, what do you have? 11.65. Anyone else get that? Yes? OK. And then for radians? 0 0.20. 0 0.20. OK, radians. All right, so here, here's where we are. Theoretically, at this point, you should be able to find the value of any inverse trig function at any given value, it, it, you know, using your calculator or analyzing the unit circle. Now we're going to go into something a little more complicated, all right? I'm going to put an expression up here, and I want you to uh, think about it, all right? I want you to find the exact value. Okay, and I would start putting start, maybe put a couple of stars next to this. This is where we start getting into problems that these are like test problems. These are things you'll see on your exam. Like everything up to this point has been building up to being able to do something like this, all right? So let's go with find the exact value of. Um, Okay, we can do that. Sine of tangent inverse of a half. And remember what exact value means? It means you're not going to do your calculator for this. You're not going to be using your, you're not going to just crank this into your calculator. You're going to find the exact value. All right, y'all ready? Please pay attention. This is, a, this is an important time for today. Does everybody agree that when I say tangent inverse of a number, that whatever this answer is, it's an angle, right? When you plug a number into the inverse tangent, it gives you back the angle. So this is some angle, I'm going to call it theta, right? I don't know what it is yet, but it's some angle theta, right? So ultimately, ultimately, aren't I really asking you to find what sine of theta is, right? So I really want to know here, what's sine of theta, right? Okay. Now, tangent inverse of a half. This thing in here that we, we said that that's theta, right? This really means, this is what we just did, right? This really means tangent of some angle is a half, right? That's really what that means? On the unit circle, do you recognize a half for tangent? I mean, if it was sine of theta equals a half, I think we all would say yes. I mean, I recognize the y-coordinate being a half or the x-coordinate being a half, but, but never tangent, right? Tangent has never been a half before, right? So you really want to use your calculator right now. You really want to just get on your calculator and do that. You want to do that. You're not allowed to, though. We're supposed to find the exact value, all right? So I'm going to do something. This is going to be weird. It's the first time we're going to see this, okay? I'm going to draw something for you. And this is what's referred to as a reference triangle. We use reference triangles. Actually, is that the folder I have in here? No. I would show you my Cal 2 students' work right now. We used, I think on the test we took yesterday, every single problem, their test was five questions. And every problem required, they draw a reference triangle, every single one of them. So this is a really important topic in calculus. But this is where you first start seeing it, all right? So what I'm going to do right here, because I can't use my calculator, I know that tangent of some angle is a half. So I'm going to draw a picture of a, a right triangle that is going to match this statement. 
Tangent back in the day, in the very beginning, was Sokotoa, right? Sokotoa. It was opposite over adjacent, right? So I'm going to refer to this numerator as the opposite side of that triangle, and this one as the adjacent side of the triangle. And I'm going to label my triangle opposite, adjacent, right? You see it? Do you all agree that that triangle represents this statement? OK. Tangent of theta is a half. What is it that we're looking for? We're looking for sine of theta. Sine of theta is so, uh, to, what sign? Opposite over hypotenuse. I don't know the hypotenuse yet. I have two sides of a right triangle though, don't I? So I can always solve for this third side. So I'm going to take a moment now, because I know I'm looking for sine of theta, I'm going to take a moment to solve this triangle completely. I'm going to solve it by, let's call this C. I'm going to say 2 squared plus 1 squared equals C squared. And then that's just 4 plus 1 is 5. 5 is C squared. So C is plus or minus the square root of 5. Right? Okay, so on our trying, um, so algebraically it's plus or minus, right? Mm -hmm. yep. Algebraically, but it has to be one or the other here. So which one is it? It's the length of the side of that hypotenuse, right? So positive. So this is going to be five, or root five. So now we can answer the question, can't we? The answer to this is what? Not root 5, sine of, remember, this is sine of the angle. Radical 5 over 5. Okay, so you've rationalized it. One it's 1 over root 5. It's opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse. So this is 1 over root 5. Done. Now, I want you to get on your calculator, whoever has a calculator out. I would like for you to tell me in a decimal what this answer is. Do 1 divided by the square root of 5. What do you get? Approximately 0.45. 0.45? Approximately 0.45? Okay, now what I want you to do on your calculator is I want you to do this, and I'm going to allow you to use your calculator now. So do tangent inverse of 0.5 or 1 half. Do that on your calculator. And then take that answer and take sine of it. And make sure that you're in, well, it won't matter. In, in, this, in this case, it won't matter. Oh, wait, hold on. Radians, make sure you're in radians. You have to be in radians. So do tangent inverse of this, and then take sine of that answer. Tell me what you get. Same thing. You should get about. 0.45. On an exam, if I ask you for the exact value and you give me 0.45 because you typed it in your calculator, you're not going to get any credit. You need this. And the only way you're getting this is if you understand the reference triangle and, and how to create this, okay? Shall we do another? I think we should. Let's do cosine of sine inverse of, do I want to do, I was going to do one third, huh, that's what they have here. I'm going to do negative one third. Things are about to get a little weird. Just a little weird. Not super weird, just a little weird. All right? What's inside here is an angle, right? I don't know what it is, but that's an angle. And what I can tell you about this angle 
is that if I can figure out what it is, then I want cosine of it, right? So ultimately, I want to know what cosine of that angle is, right? Hmm, I wonder what it is. Yeah? So I'm going to use this sine inverse of negative one third to really translate that to mean sine of some angle is negative one over three. Do y'all see the problem? Does anyone see the problem here? Negative yeah, so look, sine off the good old fashioned Sokotoa, sine is what over what? Opposite over hypotenuse, right? But wait a minute. One of these has to be negative, right? It's either negative one or negative three. Well, the hypotenuse is never negative, right? So that means the opposite side has to be negative. negative. What the hell does that mean? Let me draw a picture. Let me draw a picture. I'm going to draw a triangle. I'm going to put theta right here, here, right? The opposite side would be this side, wouldn't it? This side? Negative one. I'd have to put negative one. I know that doesn't make sense. Just put it there for a second. Negative one, and then this would be three. Do you all agree this reference triangle represents what, what, this, what this is? Yes? But a negative doesn't make any freaking sense to us normally, right? What you need to realize is that this is actually, this triangle is actually, how do we, I'm going to do it right here. This triangle is actually over here oops, in the fourth quadrant. So you go, to get to this point, you have to go down one, out three, and down one. So this point right here has a y coordinate of negative one. So it's going back to the good old fashioned, not good old fashioned, the, the second definition of sine where it was the y coordinate divided by the radius. Remember that definition, y over r? So if we look at it that way, y over r, then it makes sense that this could be negative, right? The important thing to realize is that we're down here. I'm going to keep my triangle drawn this way, but please realize that we are in the fourth quadrant here. Now, can you solve for this side? Yes? Let's call that side A. So we have A squared plus, it doesn't matter that that's negative one, we're going to square it anyway, equals three squared. So we get A squared plus one equals nine. So a squared equals eight, subtract one. A squared equals root, I'm sorry, a equals plus or minus root eight. Plus or minus root eight. Plus, plus. why plus? And this time it can't be because it's the hypotenuse. It's plus because what? Because the quadrant we're in, right? We're actually over here to the left, so this distance is positive. As I do more of these, I think you'll start to catch on to like paying attention to the quadrant, okay? It's only the second example. So this is positive root eight. Why did I solve that triangle? I should have pointed that out, I guess. We want cosine of theta, right? And cosine by definition is this over this, right? This over this. And so I needed that side, didn't I? So eight over, uh, root eight over three? Is our answer? What do you think? A little weird? How about tangent of cosine inverse of We'll do negative one third again. Find the exact value of this. That's an angle, right? That's an angle. And so ultimately, I want to know what tangent of some angle is. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to write down over here 
cosine inverse of negative one third. That means cosine of some angle is negative one over three. What quadrant am, am I in this time? Second. Second. Why? This is the, there's two ways to look at this. We can think about SOHCAHTOA, or you can go back to the other definition where it's X over R. What do you all want to do? You like SOHCAHTOA? You like X over R? If you look at it as, look at, let's look at this one as X over R, just to, and I'll remind you over here what they were, right? So sine of an angle is Y over R, Cosine of an angle is x over r, and tangent of an angle is y over x, right? Those were those three relationships we have. So if this is my x divided by my r, and my r is always positive, then I have to have a negative x-coordinate, right? So I know right now from this that I have to be over there, right? My x has to be negative. But why is it the second quadrant and not the third? Yeah, well, it hasn't been used, but because it's cosine inverse. And what is the domain restriction for cosine inverse? The, these, it can't be here or here, right? So because it's cosine inverse, we have to be in the third, the, sorry, the second quadrant, all right? Now I'm going to draw your triangle for you, but I'm going to draw it like this. It's going to be more like this now. And I know that this is 3, and this side is negative 1. Do you all see that? Negative 1. You go to the left one, it's your x-coordinate, your y-coordinate, and your radius. We want to know what tangent of theta is, right? So it's like we have a theta in here. And we're saying, what's tangent? So we need the, the opposite side, or we need the, the y-coordinate divided by the x, right? This divided by this. So we need to know what this is. I'll call it y. Why not, right? That's what we're looking for. Use a Pythagorean. So we have negative 1 squared plus y squared equals 3 squared. That's 1 plus y squared equals 9. This is the same thing, isn't it, pretty much? y squared equals 8 y equals plus or minus root 8. Which one is it, plus or minus? Plus, plus because we're in second, right? So it's got to be positive. OK, so this is going to be root 8. And so we want tangent. So tangent of that angle would be the y over the x. So what's our answer? Root 8 over negative, root eight over negative 1. So I'm just going to write as negative root 8. Do another one. Oops. Secant of tangent inverse of the square root of three. doing here okay we all agree that that's an angle right so ultimately we want to know what secant of the of that angle is yeah 
If I rewrite this over here, this means tangent inverse of root 3, right? That really means tangent of some angle is equal to the square root of 3. They must not be doing math. <laughs> they're, all, they're all having a good time. All right, so right now, looking at this, if tangent of some angle is a positive number, which two quadrants could we be in? If it's, yeah, if, it's, if tangent is positive, it's gotta be first or third, right? So I can already rule out these two quadrants, right? But, we're talking about a tangent inverse as well. And because it's tangent inverse, it can only be, what can it only be? I erased it. <laughs> tangent inverse is between, that's cotangent. So for, for tangent inverse, we need negative pi over two to pi over two, right? So it's gotta be down here or up there. So you gotta, you gotta rule out these two, right? So those two are being ruled out by this. And these two being crossed out because this tangent has to be a positive number. Do you see how I'm using both of those pieces of information to figure out what quadrant I'm in? And so this is going to be a nice regular old triangle, right? Good old triangle that makes a lot of sense to us, right? Everything should be positive on this triangle. How do I draw my triangle? Theta. Tangent is, yeah, go ahead. Pardon me? We do. Let's follow the procedure, though, because if I made that square root of 5, then it would be the same procedure we're doing right now. Yeah? So let's, let's do that, right? What is, tangent is what? The, the y over the x, right? y over x. So look at this as a fraction, root 3 over 1. So make your y coordinate root 3, make your x coordinate 1. Y'all agree that this triangle, this reference triangle, matches up to this? Yeah. And we're looking for what? Secant, right? Secant is, which side? Reciprocal of cosine, right? Cosine is the x over r or adjacent over hypotenuse, so we really want to know the hypotenuse over the adjacent or the, the r over the x. So I need, to, I need to know this distance, don't I? I need to get this. I'm going to call it r. So we know 1 squared plus root 3 squared must be r squared. That's Pythagorean, right? That's 1 plus square root of 3 squared is 3 equals r squared. I think you get r is 2, right? r is 2? Well, plus or minus, right? But because r is this distance, it's going to be 2. All right. So secant, we said, was the reciprocal of cosine. Cosine would be a half, wouldn't it? 1 over 2. So we're going to go 2 over 1. So that's our final answer, 2 over 1, which is 2. I feel like you're getting it, but then I don't feel like you're getting it. I don't know. What's going on with you all? Hmm? Hmm. Check this out. If tangent, if you have can't, if you have tangent of cosine inverse of x, or I shouldn't say if. Let's just say given. Okay, given this. I've been telling you that tangent of cosine inverse of x, right, is just this expression. Given that, rewrite it as 
as an algebraic expression. Put a star next to this. This is definitely a test problem. All right. All right, so what I've given you is an expression here, tangent of cosine inverse of x. Right now, I've given you an expression that involves trigonometric functions, right? Trig functions, tangents, cosine inverses. These are, this is trig stuff. I want you to rewrite that expression, and when you rewrite it, it needs, to be it needs to be equivalent to this expression, but it needs to be algebraic, which means there should be no sines or cosines or tangents or anything like that. It should just be an algebraic expression with the variable x in it. Which, this should not make any sense to you at this point. Let me just work through it, all right? We're going to follow almost the same exact format that we just did right now. So let me write the expression. Tangent of cosine inverse of x. Do we all agree that whatever this is, it's an angle? Cosine inverse of x is some angle that I don't know, right? And so ultimately, don't I want to know what tangent of, of that angle is? Right? That's the ultimate question. What's tangent of that angle? What do you think is coming next? A triangle, right? I'm going to take this cosine inverse of x. Right? And I'm going to rewrite that saying that this means that cosine of some angle equals x. Right? That's what this really means. Cosine inverse, remember, the problems that we were just doing. If this said cosine inverse of a half, then I would say, oh, cosine of some angle is a half. Right? So I'm doing the exact same thing we've been doing. And now I'm going to draw a triangle. This is theta. Cosine is what over what? You can either do adjacent over hypotenuse or you can do you know, x over r, whatever you want it to be. But what is this over here? This is, we need to look at that as a fraction, right? Couldn't you look at that as being x over 1? Right? x is the same as x over 1. So I can make my adjacent side x and my hypotenuse 1. x over 1. Uh, wait, hold on. Yeah, cosine is adjacent, right, over hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse. This triangle matches this expression. And what are we interested in? Tangent of that angle, which means we need the opposite and adjacent side, don't we? We need this side and this side. We don't have this side, do we? But we can get it. I'm going to call it B. We want to know what B is, right? Let's use Pythagorean. x squared plus b squared is 1 squared. And I'm solving for what variable here? B. So 